VOA News. I'm Christopher Cruz reporting. Israel's parliamentary election is too close to call, exit polls say, as both Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and challenger Benny Gantz claim wins. Cor- correspondent Linda Granstein reports for VOA from Jerusalem. Big drama. Blue and white is the largest party, and it's impossible to tell who will be the next prime minister, said the anchor on Channel 13 News, giving challenger Benny Gantz's blue and white party 37 seats to Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's 34, out of a total of 120 seats. Other exit polls had Gantz ahead by one seat or tied with Netanyahu. These are only exit polls, and the results could change once all the votes, especially those of Israeli soldiers, are counted. Pending an upcoming hearing, the Israeli Attorney General says he plans to indict Netanyahu on bribery, fraud, and breach of trust charges. A man in the eastern U.S. state of Maryland near Washington, D.C., who's been accused in an alleged Islamic State-inspired terror plot to run down people with a truck has been ordered held without bond. Federal prosecutors argued in a court appearance Tuesday that there are no conditions under which 28-year-old Rondell Henry could be freed and be assured of returning for future court appearances and that he represents a threat to the community. Gunfire was heard outside the Sudanese military headquarters in the capital Khartoum on Tuesday. At the same time, demonstrations seeking the ouster of President Omar al-Bashir continued for a fourth consecutive day. Large groups of protesters have been gathering since Saturday, calling for the end of al-Bashir's 30-year autocratic rule. 10,000 people gathered outside the military headquarters on Saturday. This is VOA News. Aid agencies are urging rival militias in Libya to do everything they can to protect civilians as fighting for control of the capital Tripoli escalates and casualties mount. The United Nations said Tuesday that a national conference for Libya, scheduled for Sunday to bring warring parties together, is unlikely to go ahead because of military escalation in Tripoli. Late Monday, U.N. Secretary General Antonio Guterres called for an immediate halt to all military operations and urged the parties to hold talks to reach a political resolution. For a seventh week, police in the Algerian capital, Algiers, fired water cannons and pepper spray at student demonstrators. The protests happened as parliament named an interim leader to replace former President Abdelaziz Bouteflika. Correspondent Edward Uranian reports for VOA from Cairo. The Islamist head of Algeria's Justice and Development Party, Abdullah Jabala, told journalists that he does not believe the people will accept Ben Salah as interim president. He says that the people have taken to the streets to get rid of all elements of the Bouteflika regime and that some parties are making efforts to do an end run around the demands of the people. Suleiman Shanain, the head of a major Islamist bloc in parliament, told Al Hora TV that the people reject the decision to appoint Abdul Qadir Ben Salah as interim head of state and that legislators should have chosen someone else to replace former President Bouteflika. New York City has declared a public health emergency because of an outbreak of measles. AP correspondent Ed Donahue reports. Most of the cases are in the Williamsburg section of Brooklyn. The message today for all New Yorkers is to take measles seriously. This is the largest outbreak in New York since 1991. The only way to stop this outbreak is to ensure that those who have not been vaccinated get the vaccine. Mayor Bill de Blasio says anyone who refuses to get a measles vaccine could be fined $1,000. It's crucial for people to understand the measles vaccine works. It is safe. It is effective. It is time tested. New York's health commissioner says there is resistance from some groups that believe the measles shots are dangerous. I'm Ed Donahue. Television actress Lori Loughlin and her fashion designer husband Mossimo Giannulli and 14 other parents were hit Tuesday with a new money laundering charge in the sweeping college admissions bribery scheme. You can find more on these and other late-breaking and developing stories from around the world, around the clock, at voanews.com and on the VOA News mobile app. I'm Christopher Cruz, VOA News.